Good morning, everyone. I'm Jane Morgan, the Investor and Media Relations Manager for Arizona Lithium. Today, I'm joined by Managing Director Paul Lloyd to discuss today's announcement. Thanks for joining me, Paul. Good morning, Jane, and uh, good news from uh, for AZL and the Big Sandy Project. So very exciting time for us after an extended period of time working with the Bureau of Land Management. Well, absolutely. This is a huge milestone for Big Sandy and something that our shareholders have been waiting for. So with this permit of exploration now secured for Big Sandy Lithium Project, can you walk us through what this means for the project? Yeah, look, it really is game on for the Big Sandy Project. Our shareholders have been continually questioning me about uh, this drilling approval and I have never given up and I've always said that we would get that um, approval. Now we have it. And that means let's fast track this uh, sustainable lithium development project in Arizona and work with uh, NTEC, our now major shareholder and uh, strategic alliance partner. So things are really lining up for AZL shareholders. And the objective here is to increase the resource. Uh, shareholders might remember that the resource is 320,000 tonnes of uh, lithium carbonate equivalent. And to put that into perspective, uh, last year's consumption of lithium carbonate equivalent was about a million. It needs to grow to about 3 million to support the uh, EV revolution and renewable power storage requirements for the Western world, basically, for the full world. And we don't really know where those 2 million tonnes are going to come from. So um, we have a project in Arizona that can be expanded very quickly. So uh, we want to get out there and drill this project. We now have approval to do it. So, Paul, the Big Sandy project is a sedimentary project. So how should shareholders compare this to other projects perhaps in the space? Look, while we've been waiting for drilling approvals at Big Sandy, the uh, lithium sedimentary space uh, has improved and expanded significantly in that time. And predominantly by the project that is the de direct geological comparison to the Big Sandy project being the Thacker Pass project in Northern Nevada owned by Lithium Americas. That project is a substantial project. It has attracted 2.3 billion uh, of funding from the Department of Energy and $650 million uh, from General Motors. So that is our direct comparison. They are obviously significantly further advanced than the Big Sandy project, but it does show that people are prepared to back sedimentary projects and there's a number of reasons why they back these sedimentary projects. It's, they are available in the US, they are extremely large, and they are cost effective to produce. So as we see the Lithium Americas project, Thacker Pass, go into production, they are at construction phase, and that is expected to go for the next two years. When they hit their straps with production, I would see that the value of the Big Sandy project out in the market will significantly increase to the benefit of our uh, shareholders the AZL shareholders. So I'm looking forward to that. Big Sandy has been a little difficult over the years to get people interested in it because it's sedimentary. Now that's changed very much so. So, so we have a, an asset that is market appealing. So just on that, Paul, can you elaborate on the potential impact this ex expanded exploration could have on the overall resource estimates? And again, how this positions us in the lithium market? Look, I know this project very well, Jane. I've ended the project and have been working on it for nearly a decade now. And uh, with that 320,000 tonnes in our initial resource, that came from 37 holes. We're going to drill 131 holes immediately north and immediately south of uh, the known resource. And given that we have a 12-year mine life at the moment, the plan is to take that to something like 50, north of 50 years, and that will be enough to go through and get all our studies done and uh, and eventually get mining approvals, et cetera. There's a lot of lithium out there. We don't need to drill all the ground. And uh, we did take some of the holes off the uh, plan of exploration. And that was basically because of the uh, change to the geological priorities that we had. So uh, we have now uh, obtained the approvals and we're very keen to get out there and drill after the 30-day uh, uh, appeal period is over. And um, we have worked extensively with the Bureau of Land Management and I must compliment the Bureau of Land Management in uh, the work they have done. Shareholders have criticised them 
uh, to me and say that they weren't doing a very good job. They have engaged all the stakeholders and they have listened to the stakeholders and we have worked through that process. And um, I think that uh, people will find that the Bureau of Land Management are a very responsible entity and we are a very responsible corporate citizen. We will minimise the water usage on this drilling program. We'll work with all the stakeholders and uh, we'll advance this project for the benefit of uh, the US because they do need to grow their internal production of lithium. And the president knows that. And um, any people in power know the understanding that the Chinese control the supply chain and that has to stop. So, Paul, given the successful production of 99.8% battery grade lithium carbonate from Big, Big Sandy's mineralization, can you discuss the technological advancements or innovations that have been pivotal in achieving such high quality results? Yeah, look, we always want to have a project that is large and we always want to have a project that produces a quality product. Big Sandy is both those. It can produce battery grade uh, lithium carbonate that is in demand. And our lithium research center that was just opened last week officially will uh, add a lot to producing extremely high quality product from the Big Sandy project. So we are well positioned there with the lithium research center. And um, our CTO is very experienced in that area. So we will continue to develop the, uh, the technology. But we know early on from the Big Sandy project that we produce a quality product. So that's a good start. And uh, it is a large resource, which we are now able to grow with the approvals recently uh, by the BLM. So Arizona Lithium has emphasised minimal environmental impact for this drilling program. So can you detail the specific environmental management strategies that will be implemented during this extensive exploration phase? Yes, well, the nature of the deposit does allow us to have a very low environmental impact. This is strip mining or surface mining. And um, so the material, for people who ever visited the project, you can see this material at surface over many, many kilometres in the area. So the objective here is to minimise water consumption. And from the drilling process, we are looking at some alternative drilling methods that don't use as much water, but we also are not going to tap the big sandy aquifer for uh, drilling uh, water for the drilling process. So we are responsible. We've listened to the stakeholders and we're not going to utilize the water from the big sandy aquifer. So this is only an exploration program of 131 holes. So it doesn't use a lot of water. And in fact, uh, when the project goes into production, it doesn't use a lot of water because of the nature of the deposit. It might use two or three golf courses that you see in Phoenix, not a lot of water, and we will recycle huge amounts of that water. That's where the technology will come in, and that's where the LRC will help us to recycle nearly all the water that we need for this project. And so the collaboration with the Navajo Transitional Energy Company represents a significant partnership. So how does this partnership enhance the operational capabilities at Big Sandy and what benefits do you foresee? Yes, well, we had a meeting just last week with uh, Entech and they have assigned a large number of their employees to the Big Sandy project. With, with drilling approvals now, we can get the Entech um, executives managing the drilling operations and starting the permitting process off. They will uh, take shares for that work at seven and a half cents, remembering that our share price is currently 2.2. So it's a very good deal for AZL shareholders. So no further dilution because we have issued those shares and those shares are sitting in escrow pending the successful uh, milestones being hit by NTEC. So NTEC will do the drilling operations, they will complete the studies on this project, and they'll do all the environmental assessments, etc. They're very experienced in that, and remembering that they are the third largest coal producer in uh, the United States. So they know what they're doing, and uh, it's a pleasure dealing with NTEC. And I think with this drilling approvals, we are in the ideal position to really bring in the resources of NTEC and fast track this project. NTEC have won a number of rehabilitation environmental awards. They know how to work with First Nation people and all stakeholders, and we're going to utilize those skills to develop Big Sandy. 
So, Paul, looking beyond the upcoming drilling program, what are the next steps for Arizona Lithium at both Big Sandy and Prairie Lithium? Well, Jane, it does change a little bit now, doesn't it? We have two advanced lithium development projects. Up in Canada, we are drilling. We've completed our first production well, and we're now, uh, get, we'll have the completion rig rocking up there over this weekend to start testing that well. So we have a lot of information, a lot of news flow coming out of the Prairie project as we go further down the production uh, route for that project. But we also have now Big Sandy back on the on the cards with the drilling and the completion of the studies managed by NTEC. So exciting time for AZL. Prairie, we're still talking production of 2025. We'll drill a number of holes on pad numbers one, two, and three uh, during the this year. And then we will complete our detailed engineering designs and commence construction of the DLE plan. So the drilling part of it is uh, we have a lot of expertise in that area and we're designing the DLE plant. We look like we will be the first producer of lithium from a brine in an oil field. And that area is very much hotting up. You see Exxon entering the smack over. You see other oil and gas companies playing chase up in the smack over. And um, there's some interesting things going on in that space. So shareholders will be really interested over the next three to six months to see some of that uh, coming out. So now we have two development projects that we can uh, explore and uh, and fast track. So uh, exciting time for us. We'll, we'll need to grow our uh, executive team, but we have NTEC there. And those uh, 30 plus people that they've assigned to the Big Sandy would have taken us years to recruit uh, as an Australian company. So huge advantage in that alliance. Up in Canada, very confident with the drill crews, very confident with our exploration team up there. And um, we are uh, advancing that one. So um, yeah, I look, I couldn't be happier. Very excited about the drilling approvals. Wonderful. Well, it's certainly exciting times ahead. And um, so thank you for joining me today, Paul. Thanks, Jane.